where there is a temperature difference, there is heat transfer. Heat energy is transferred from the higher temperature part to the lower temperature part. In winter, the heat energy of the heating room is transferred from the indoor to the outdoor, and the heat energy of the air conditioned room is transferred from the outdoor to the indoor in the summer. There are three basic ways of heat transfer, including conduction, convection, and radiation. The actual heat transfer process can be regarded as different combinations of these three methods. Thermal conduction exists in solid, liquid, and gas, but the thermal conduction mechanism is different. In gas, thermal conduction is caused by the collision of molecules when they move irregularly. In liquid, thermal conduction is caused by molecular vibrations that move intermittently at equilibrium positions. In solids, except for metals, thermal conduction is caused by the vibration of particles whose equilibrium position is unchanged, and the metal conduct heat through the movement of free electrons. The vast majority of building materials are not dense solids, and there are three heat transfer modes. However, due to the small proportion of heat energy transferred by convection and radiation impulse, it can be considered that there is only thermal conduction process in solid building materials. In general, the temperature T is a function of the spatial coordinates x, y, z, and time t. The temperature distribution of each point inside the object at a certain time is called the temperature field, and this picture represents a temperature field. The time varying temperature field is a stable temperature field, denoted by T is equal to F x y z tau. A temperature field that does not change with time is a stable temperature field, denoted by T is equal to F x y z. When the temperature only changes along the x axis, it is a one-dimensional stable temperature field, denoted as T is equal to F x. When the temperature varies along the x and y axis, it is a two-dimensional stable temperature field, denoted as T is equal to F x y. In the temperature field, the surface connected by points with the same temperature at the same time are the isothermal surface. The three curved surface in the finger represent the isothermal surface of T minus 30, T and T plus 30 respectively from left to right. Isothermal surfaces at different temperatures do not intersect. The temperature varies in any direction that intersects the isothermal surface, with the most significant change in the n-direction normal to the isothermal surface. The limit of the ratio of the temperature difference 30 to the distance 30 n between the two isothermal surfaces along the normal n direction is called the temperature gradient. Since there is no temperature difference on the isothermal surface, thermal conduction cannot proceed along the isothermal surface and must pass through the isothermal surface. The amount of heat passing through a unit area of an isothermal surface per unit time is called the heat flux and is written as Q is equal to dQ divided by dF. When the distribution of the heat flux is known, the heat flux can be obtained by the surface integral of the heat flux. When the heat flux is uniformly distributed over the area F, the heat flux Q is equal to Q multiplied by F. Thermal conduction follows Fourier law. The heat flux at each point inside a homogeneous object is proportional to the temperature gradient. Lambda in the formula is the thermal conductivity, which is always a positive value, and the negative sign indicates that heat transfer can only be carried out in the direction of decreasing temperature. The heat flow transfer direction in the finger is the G direction. The temperature increasing along the n direction, and the temperature gradient is a positive value, then Q is a negative value. Thermal conductivity refers to under stable conditions when a one meter sink object 
has a temperature difference of 1 degree Celsius on both sides. The heat that conducted through an area of 1 square meter within 1 hour. The greater the thermal conductivity, the stronger the thermal conductivity of the material. The thermal conductivity of various materials was determined experimentally. In general, the thermal conductivity of metals is the largest, followed by non-metals and liquids, and the gas are the smallest. Due to the low thermal conductivity of air, stagnant air is a good thermal insulator. If the material contains poles, the thermal conductivity will be greatly reduced. Therefore, the insulation materials are made porous or loose. Thermal conductivity is related to temperature. In engineering calculations, the arithmetic mean value within the temperature range used is often taken as a constant. Convection exists in fluids, including natural convection and forced convection. Natural convection is formed due to temperature difference, while forced convection is formed by external force. The degree of natural convection mainly depends on the temperature difference. The greater the temperature difference, the stronger the convection. Forced convection depends on the magnitude of the external force. The greater the external force, the stronger the convection. The thermal design of the building mainly considers the heat exchange process between the air and the wall when the air flows along the surface of the envelope. The process includes air convection and thermal conduction between air molecules and the wall. The integrated process of convection and thermal conduction is called surface convective heat exchange. This is different from pure convective heat transfer. It can be seen from the finger jet. When the fluid flows along the wall surface, in the boundary layer near the wall surface, along the direction from the wall surface to the fluid, there are three flow conditions, laminar flow region, transition region, and the turbulent flow region. The convective heat transfer coefficient is calculated using different formulas according to factors such as natural convection or forced convection. Whether the envelope is vertical, horizontal, or inclined, wall conditions and heat flow direction. Think about it. Should buildings at the same location and different heights be calculated using the same wind speed value? Radiation heat transfer is the transfer of heat energy by electromagnetic waves without the need for a medium or contact with other objects. Objects with temperatures above absolute zero emit radiant heat. The higher the temperature, the stronger the thermal radiation ability. According to the characteristic of the radiation spectrum, various objects can be divided into three categories, black body, gray body, and non-gray body, that is selective radiator. General building materials belong to the gray body. As can be seen from the finger, cold one is a black body. This can emit thermal radiation in the wall band under the same temperature conditions. The radiation capacity is the largest, and its emissivity is represented by Cb. This is equal to 5.68. Cold two is a gray body. The radiation spectrum is similar to that of the black body. The radiation capacity is reduced and the radiation coefficient is represented by C. Cold 3 is a non-gray body, and its radiation spectrum is different from that of a black body. It can only emit thermal radiation in a part of the band, and the radiation capacity of some bands exceeds that of the gray body. The radiation obeys the stephen Boltzmann law, that is the total radiation capacity of black body and the gray body is proportional to the fourth power of the absolute temperature of its surface. The radiation spectrum of the same object at different temperatures is different. As the temperature increases, the salt wheel component increases. The wavelength characteristics of radiation emitted by an object surface at different temperatures 
are generally represented by the wavelengths corresponding to the maximum monochromatic radiation force. This follows Vn's law and is equal to 2898 divided by the absolute temperature of the object surface. In building thermal engineering, radiation with a wavelength greater than 3 micro is called long wave radiation, and radiation less than 3 micro is called short wave radiation. The surface temperature of the sun is about 6000 Kelvin, and the wavelength corresponding to the maximum monochromatic radiation force is equal to 0 0.483 micro. This is less than 3 micro so it belongs to salt wave radiation. Similarly, the surface temperature of the enclosure structure is about 300 Kelvin, and the lambda asterisk is equal to 10 micro. This is greater than 3 micro. This belongs to long wave radiation. An object not only has the ability to emit thermal radiation outward, but also absorbs and reflects external radiation. And some materials also have transmission. The absorption coefficient is equal to the ratio of absorbed resident energy to incident energy. The reflection coefficient is equal to the ratio of the reflected resident energy to the incident energy. For opaque materials, the absorption coefficient plus the reflection coefficient equals 1. For any specific wavelength, the absorption coefficient of the material surface to the external radiation is equal to its own emissivity. That is, the greater the radiation capability of the material, the greater the absorption capability of the external radiation. The absorption and reflection properties of materials for thermal radiation mainly depend on the color, natural, and smoothness of the surface of the material. Measure the natural properties refer to conductors or non-conductors. For short wave radiation, color plays a dominant role. For long wave radiation, material properties play a dominant role. White surfaces are the most reflective of visible light and have little difference in reflection of long wave radiation compared to black surface. Therefore, whitening on the outer surface of the envelope is very effective, but whitening in the airspace is ineffective. Polished metal surfaces are highly reflective of both short wave and long wave radiation. With low absorption, window glass can transmit most of the solar radiation and very little long wave radiation. Therefore, the glass can bring in a lot of solar radiation during the day and can prevent indoor long wave radiation from going out at night. However, due to the large thermal conductivity of glass, the heat loss caused by heat conduction at night is very large. Think about it. How can we use these properties to prevent heat and increase temperature? How to reduce the heat loss caused by heat conduction? What effect will the skin material with high reflection coefficient have on the surrounding environment? The amount of radiation between two surfaces depends primarily on the surface temperature. The ability of the surface to emit and absorb radiation and their measure position. For two surfaces at any relative position, without considering multiple reflexes and only considering the first absorption, the general formula for surface radiation heat transfer is Heat flux equals radiant heat transfer coefficient multiplied by surface temperature difference of two radiant heat transfer objects. Heat transfer through the building envelope includes three processes, surface heat absorption, structural heat transfer, and surface heat release. This process is actually a comprehensive process of three basic heat transfer methods. The solid material layer is mainly for thermal conduction, and the air layer is mainly for radiation heat transfer. Heat absorption and heat release are collectively referred to as surface heat transfer. In this, convection and thermal conduction are difficult to study separately, generally considered as convective heat exchange. Therefore, surface heat transfer 
is equal to the sum of the convective heat transfer and the radiation heat transfer. Let alpha be the surface heat transfer coefficient. This is equal to alpha c plus alpha r. Then q is equal to the product of alpha and theta minus t. Alpha can be taken according to the thermal engineering design specification for stable buildings. The heat transfer of the structural layer can be calculated according to Fourier's law. Think about it. How to use this basic knowledge to calculate the heat transfer of the envelope structure in the ideal indoor and outdoor heat flow transfer beneficial to the indoor heat and humidity environment? If it is unfavorable, how to avoid or reduce its impact through architectural design methods?